my first ever investment and why it sucked. It wasn't that great. I'll show you what it was. My first investment ever was Coca-Cola stock. Take a symbol KO, a stock that for many is a staple of their portfolio. A healthy dividend paying stock. And you know why I bought in? Do you know why I bought in a Coca-Cola stock? You know that was, why that was the first investment I ever made? It was for one reason. It was because Warren Buffett, the greatest investor of all time, said that I will never sell a share of Coca-Cola. I read that somewhere, I heard that somewhere, and I thought, there's no better business. If he's not willing to sell it, then this must be the ultimate investment. You know, it continues to go upward persistently. This is the perfect stock. There's no better equity in the market. What I was missing, and what I see so many investors missing in relation, and this is the mistake that a lot of new investors make, is that they base their investments simply upon what others are doing. They hear Warren Buffett say something, they hear Charlie Munger say something, they hear Munish Pabrai say something, and they think, oh, I'll just buy that. I'll just buy that company because he likes it, I might as well get in. Well, the fact is, your circumstances as a new investor, as a young investor, potentially even as a relatively experienced investor, are still vastly different to that of Warren Buffett, to that of Charlie Munger. So as a young investor, when I was looking at Coca-Cola, what I missed, you know, I had two very different goals between me and Warren Buffett. My goal, growing my capital, building my wealth. Naturally, as a young beginning, beginning investor, I was looking to get companies that can do that. Compound over time, compounding machines that would build my wealth over time. What's Warren Buffett's goal at this time? Do you think Warren Buffett's goal right now is to rapidly compound and build his wealth, buying high growth stocks? Not at all. Warren Buffett is in a wealth preservation phase. He's worth over $100 billion. He's not looking to buy super high growth stocks, stocks that can build and compound over time. He's not looking at the NVIDIAs. He's not looking at the AMDs. He's looking at companies like Coca-Cola. The reason he wouldn't sell it is because, you know, he's got such a low cost basis. He's got so much free cash flow, so many dividends flowing in from this company, such a large holding. That was the misinterpretation I got. I was thinking, okay, he's not selling it. It must be the best stock in the world. That's not the reality. Because if you conduct a valuation of Coca-Cola, yes, it is all right. The company's okay. It's fairly profitable. Net margins of 25.28%, a healthy degree of financial strength, a lot of free cash flow flowing to this company. It's a good business. But as a value investor, as someone who's trying to buy undervalued companies, companies that have the potential for growth going forward, do you really think that Coca-Cola can exponentially grow over time? Given the scale they're operating at, given the maturity of this business, do you really think that they can keep compounding at a reasonable rate going forward? You know, to get a fair value on this company, you need to price in around 16% growth. You price in 16% growth, it's about at fair value. 16% growth over the next decade with a fair value. Do you think Coca-Cola is going to grow at 16% over the next decade? I think that growth rate is a bit too high. I think given the maturity of the company, the scale of its operation, something like a 10% growth rate would be more reasonable. And this is the fault I see so many new investors come across because they look at a business. They don't actually run this valuation. They don't actually have a look at the tangible fundamentals. They don't actually have a look at a valuation. All they do is hear that someone else is buying it and they buy into it themselves. It's the reason that stocks like GME, that stocks like AMC ran up because it's a crowd mentality. And even as a fairly focused investor, an investor who doesn't get caught up in stocks like that, it's still a prevailing factor. It's still something that happens. Seeing an investor I'm fond of, seeing the, the Chase Coleman's, the Christopher Hans buying in to top quality stocks, and so I like to follow them. The fact is that's not how we should play the game. That's not the way investing should be done. My first investment was a big mistake. Because if I had gone out, if I actually valued other companies, the amount of capital I allocated to Coca-Cola, if I had just put that into, say, an Apple or a Google, which was substantially undervalued at the time, but I didn't take the time to devalue those other companies. I just listened to what someone else was saying. If I took the time to do my own research, to, to conduct my own due diligence, I would have seen these massive opportunities present within the marketplace, but I didn't. So next time you hear someone saying, this is the next big stock, this is the next big investment, learn from my first investment. Learn to not simply follow what someone else is doing. Make your own decisions. Come to your own conclusions. Run your own analysis on the businesses you're buying, because that is the only way that over the long term, you're going to get our performance. That is the only way that over the long term, you have the potential of beating the market. Don't get caught up on what others are saying. Get caught up in doing your own research. Get caught up 
and doing your own due diligence. That's my recommendation to you. That's what I learned from my first investment. That kind of sucked, to be honest with you. Very, very little return relative to what I could have achieved by buying into other companies at that time. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something more about why you shouldn't follow what other investors are doing in the marketplace, why my first investment wasn't the best one possible, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in my next video, then please just comment down below. Love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. And I'll see you in the next one.